Hey guys, Pogiopolis here, and today it's a little bit different. <laughs> I haven't uh, really talked to you guys in a long time. I kind of haven't really been on YouTube in a long time. It's kind of a hard thing to really <laughs> talk about. Because I've just been away for so long. It's kind of crazy that I went from being, like, uploading to, like, just stopping for, like, three years. And, like, I was posting, but I just really wasn't, I don't know, I just kind of lost my interest I kind of lost like a lot of the just like motivation there was just a lot of things going on like personally and I'm gonna go like I'm gonna go through that with you guys cuz I really just haven't talked in a long time and it's figured <laughs> why not you know we're in this quarantine well we're just getting over it now but it's figured now would be the best time at any time so yeah I'm kinda back <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be uploading as much as I used to but uh It's just kind of crazy how long I've been gone. I, I think the last time I was like, I uploaded something. I mean, I mean, obviously I've I uploaded my movies and I uploaded that one video like a while ago, but I took it down because I didn't think it was really that good. And that's kind of like the main thing that's been like my problems with <laughs> even uploading to YouTube. Like I would get started with a video and I would just get either busy or just not interested or I would just like lose confidence in the video and I just wouldn't upload it or I would just honestly get lazy <laughs> and just not even edit and I was like oh I'll get I'll get to it I'll get to it I just never did like I have legit like two years two three years of stuff just like on my drive that I haven't even <laughs> uploaded yet um, so where do I start I guess to where this kind of all like came kind of crashing down and just like the big motivation thing was just like I didn't feel I didn't feel like doing anything. Obviously now I'm better, but we're, we'll get to that. So 2017, actually, you know, we're going to even go further than that. 2016 was probably the best year of my life so far. I was in a band. I was doing a ton of music stuff. I was doing a ton of YouTube stuff. I was doing editing. I was doing school stuff with the yearbook. I was, did I say well, I was in a band? I was in a band. Um, and I was in a relationship. And uh, yeah, I mean, everything, like, everything was great. You know, I was trying to get my life figured out for the first part of my life, I should say. You know, just turning 18 and learning a ton of new things. I had lost uh, 40 pounds the previous summer and was keeping it off. I was maintaining it. I was about 200 pounds. I was exercising. I was thin. Better looking, in my opinion. Um... Yeah, I was just at the top of my life, for real. I was at 
for myself, it was like the top. And I just, <laughs> a lot of things happened. A lot of things, you know, personally happened. Um, just to, long story short, <laughs> uh, I got cheated on. And that first cheat kind of broke me. It was like, it was a constant like roller coaster up, 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 so getting so high, just feeling so good about myself, you know, getting into college, graduating high school, all this other stuff, band and everything. And then I get cheated on by somebody that I was really close with in a relationship probably the longest I had ever been in a relationship at that time and just get cheated on <laughs> and it was like it was like a wake up call it was like what it's like what just like what just happened I couldn't believe it I think for a day I was just in shock and then I just started to break down um crying a lot I actually was <laughs> taken out of a class in college not like taken out but like I was you know taken out of the class by uh, my teacher went down to this psych you know psychological place and I was supposed to get help and I didn't so, yeah, it was just a lot of, like, mental stress that I was going through. On top of, like, me just trying to figure my life out in the beginning, there was a lot of things going on. And I was working. I was in a band. I was like, you know, what's going on? What's going to happen? Eventually, me and that person ended up getting back together. And then, come New Year's Day at 5 a.m., I get the text that uh, we're breaking up again. And so at this time I knew, I was like, I kind of already knew by the way they had sent the text. And I was like, all right, I get it. So I was kind of just done with everything on top of like my already spiraling, like mental health. Cause there was like a lot of problems that I hadn't like talked about. Or, you know, things that I had no idea about that I was going through. Um, anyways, four days later, that person ended up getting with somebody else. So, you know, that made me feel, like, really, really bad. <laughs> really bad. Uh, a lot of my confidence just lowered. I clung to food because I was just, I just got really hungry whenever I was just like depressed or sad and my grades were just slipping. It was just like, it was hard to even do homework. It was hard to just sit there and think of like all the times that me and that person spent <laughs> together. It was just like, it just hurt. It was just an ache. It just, it was a pain and over and over again. But, uh, you know, eventually I got over it. I got through the semester and I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do good for myself. I'm not going to let this, you know, bring me down. So I started exercising again, started jogging again. I probably lost another 10, 15 pounds. And this was right before I went to Germany, which you guys saw <laughs> those videos and which, which is crazy. Cause three years ago today I was in Germany or I was just getting ready to leave, actually. Um, it's just crazy how much time has passed. So, <laughs> I go to Germany, because I had my friend uh, Gina, and that was, like, one of the best trips ever of my life. That was, like, out of everything that happened, that was, like, the trip that just made it all, like, it started things started to feel better 
you know, I started to feel better about myself. You know, I, I had new content to upload. You know, things were getting back on track. Um, and then I came back, got my wisdom teeth out legit the day after I came back. And then I had like two, three weeks of recovery, which was insane. <laughs> I, I don't know how I did it. And then I like, I was, I lost a ton of weight, but then I gained it right all back again. Cause I went vegan the whole time I was like in Germany. And then I come back. I don't, I was just trying like new things, I guess. And then I was like, you know what? I'm feeling good about myself. I went and got myself some clothes and I signed up for a dating app. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I I was just kind of like desperate at that point. I wanted something to fill the void and I didn't want to like step on any more people. So yeah. <laughs> I signed up for it. There's a few people that I talked to some things didn't work out and then I met this one person. We got along first couple weeks and then they had like a trip to Japan <laughs> out of nowhere and legit like okay the person paid like $20 to like talk to me while they were on the plane and I was like look <laughs> you know I appreciate it but like we just, you know, it was just like, it was like texting like all the time. Like I, <laughs> like I could do that, but it was to the point where it was like every other minute was like a text back, a text back, a text back. And I get some people can like do those relationships, but man, it was just like, it was just like every day. And I really didn't know that person enough to like get that, to like, <laughs> to like, you know, commit to that. So there was a day where I just like stopped talking, but it wasn't mean I wasn't going to just stop talking to that person. And then they come back with, Oh, you're not talking to me. What's going on. You're not really into me. And I'm like, okay. And then that person <laughs> gets with two other people. I hear this you know, later three months later, but then, you know, it was just another, another thing. So that was a dig. And I was just like, well, <laughs> all right, I'm kind of just done. And so I was done and I was focusing on, uh, my film club and just like college stuff. And I didn't really feel like uploading. I thought it was like, after that, I didn't feel like uploading. Like there was a couple of videos I made and I just, I didn't feel like making it. I didn't feel like editing. So I just, you know, went back to college. Uh, started up classes again. Everything was going good. And then I met somebody that I'm actually still talking to this day. You know, we've had, like, our ups and downs. But ultimately, like, that person has stuck around for me, like, this entire time. And there was a point where we did have a break. And it was mainly just because of my trust issues because after like two people cheat on, cheating on me back to back, it was just like, bro, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to be doing anything anymore. I just didn't want to <laughs> have to deal with anything. Um, so I just had trust issues and I just, it was hard to believe anything I heard. So it kind of just messed me up and it messed them up for a little bit. Um, but Luckily, you know, they were still there for me. So that was, that was good. Um, and I'm thankful for them still being around. But yeah, so we got together and then we had a break. And it was like on that break where I was like, I legit felt like hopelessness. I didn't feel like, you know, anything was going to go good for me. I kind of just gave up. I started eating really like a lot. Um, 
I lost some friends or at least some friendships. I was rooming with these guys and, you know, they just leave, you know, they just leave over tiny little problems. I didn't see coming, uh, that I didn't expect and they didn't talk to me about it at all and just left. Uh, you know, there's a lot more I could say on that, but that's all I'm going to say. So I had lost friends. I was already losing friends. I had high school people that just stopped talking to me out of nowhere. There's a lot of like family problems that I went through. I was still getting over my ex and I was trying to be friends with them at the same time as trying to get my, like myself together. And what I should have done was just kind of leave that in the past and just move on and just focus on myself. But I didn't. I was focused on trying to have a relationship. Um, of course, in that same time, I, <laughs> I lost, and I, I didn't lose. My stuff was stolen. My computer was stolen. My terabyte, two terabyte hard drive was stolen. My books were stolen um, after this concert. And you guys have seen that. And it was like after that, after everything that like had happened, I was just like, bro, I'm done. <laughs> I just, I went to town on food. It was like every day. I didn't care what I ate. I didn't drink pop. I've been off of pop for five years, but it was just like overeating, like eating whenever I wanted to. We're talking about pasta, pizza, burgers, fries, chicken, and fried chicken, I should say. Uh, it was just like, you know, ice cream, Starbucks, you name it, you know, whatever the college had, that's what I ate. Not saying that they didn't have healthy foods. It was just like, it was whatever I wanted to eat. Bagels with cream cheese, chocolate chip cookies, insomnia cookies, if you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, I was living it up. I was also working at the same time through all of this. Uh, so, yeah. So, New Year's comes around. The store that I was working at starts talking about wanting to close or not wanting to, but legally having to close or some money problems basically. And it sucked because I had worked there since I was like 16. I never really talked about it on my YouTube channel. It was just something I did. And yeah, <laughs> it was crazy because my dad was also working there and he'd been working there for like 30 years and just boom gone luckily he was still able to have his students and he still teaches to this day so thankful you know for that for him uh for me though i <laughs> didn't have a job after that so it was like a constant just like loss 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 it was just like lose 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 you know losing relationships Losing the job, losing friends, losing confidence in myself. It was just like a constant downhill. And that's why I say 2018 was like the worst year. Um, things in my family started to get like really heated, especially with the, you know, politics. You know, I had one view, they had another. And it was just like a battle it was just like a struggle you know going back and forth about different things and so that summer I just didn't do anything I, I worked a job for like a month it was at a, a movie theater and I actually did pretty well I got like five sales awards and I made you know good decent amount of money but I quit because my bosses were just giving me just they just ignored me like one day I just was asking them a question on rewards and previous to that they were just on me about everything 
I had eight bosses all like watching. They had, they were all watching us, but especially me since I was the new guy. And I was just getting picked on too by kids. They were like 16, 17 year old kids. And I was uh, 19, going to be 20. And I was getting <laughs> picked on because I was taking their line. I was taking their sales because I was good in sales. That's what I did for four years ish yeah just about four years three years four years so i was good in sales i was good at selling and i was fast and i was a hard worker still am just you know then it was just like go 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 uh so yeah i quit that job um and then i got kind of belittled for quitting that job because i i did need it but at the same time, I was still okay. Um, there's a lot of like personal problems I also had with that kind of aspect of things. Uh, I didn't really want to work anywhere else other than what you know my career had to offer. So I was kind of just stuck for a long time. Um, eventually, I started working at the bowling showcase which is one of the coolest things I've ever done. And that is, I hopefully I'm still working there this year, but who knows because of this whole virus thing and what they're going to have to do. Uh, most likely, probably not. It's going to be so different now. I don't even know if college is going to be the same. But that was kind of a confidence booster towards the end of the summer. And I worked that for the fall. And the fall of 2018 was just kind of like, go, 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 go. I was given the position of a producer for the show called E Weekly. And it was really cool. It was really fun. In the beginning, of course. Later on. You know, I understand why I was handed that position. Um, at the same time, I was able to handle it, but I was still new to everything. And just being handed this big responsibility, you know, I was lucky. But at the same time, I was, like, afraid. I didn't know what to do at the beginning. But eventually, like, I did the first couple of shows and I was fine. Um, but during that time, there was, like, a lot of, like, just self-doubt my lack of confidence was still there the only thing I felt confident in was like my film skills and that's kind of what really I focused my happiness on but I still wasn't uploading just because I had I had gained like 40 pounds I had basically gained all my weight uh, weight back and I just didn't look you know I didn't look great I look better now I'm taking my I'm taking care of myself now. But like then it was I was at my lowest. Like by the winter I was two sixty five. Like I was I was heavy. You know. Uh people might say, Oh well you didn't look that way. I was. <laughs> um so yeah, I did that show. It was really stressful. There's a lot of personal things going on alongside with that and it was on top of like me feel, feeling like I was doing all this work for nothing or I was doing this work and I wasn't getting like you know props for it eventually I did but I wasn't even thinking of that um, my grades also weren't the best I mean I had made the honor roll the previous semester and my GPA was good. Everything was good. It's just I wasn't feeling like I wanted to do anything. All I was really focused on was this e-weekly show and working at the TA office, which was also nice. Um, being like a technical assistant for the students, which was really cool. You got to like run cameras and help out classes. And I actually taught a class a couple times. So that was like really cool for me kind of just makes me want to like teach maybe later on in life 
Um, so I, I'm just kind of going on here. But like I said, 2018 was like, it was the worst year. Because in November, I had attempted to, you know, go. <laughs> I wanted to be done. Um, a lot of things had happened in the summer. I didn't feel great with myself. Um, I wasn't with anybody. I just felt alone. Um, things weren't really going well with my roommate either because I was supposed to have uh, this other guy who was really cool with me the previous year and was a great friend and he's still a great friend and I was supposed to have a room with him but the guy that signed up for the room instead of him because he because uh, my friend didn't have time uh, <laughs> signed in and so I had to just you know deal with that Um it was just something I was just not, you know, ready for. Wasn't in my favor. Um, but, you know, what can you do? It's life. <laughs> it's hard to get anything in your favor, I've learned. You know, unless you're rich. <laughs> unless you have money. Unless you know people. Unless you have a lot of friends. It's easy for, for you to get things. But, you know, if you lose friends, if you don't have, you know, the social status, if you don't have a steady job, you know, no one's going to want to be around. They're like, oh, this person doesn't have his life together, but my other friends do, so I'm going to go hang out with those friends, you know. And you get belittled. And it just gets to a point where... It just don't feel like important. I didn't feel important anymore. I was at my lowest. I was also in a, in a, a friend group. <laughs> and that friend group had broke up. And I was blaming a lot of that on me. Because I was kind of like the middleman. Everyone told me their problems. But then I was talking to them about each other's problems. And they didn't know how to solve them. And they didn't want to solve them. And they were just kind of in their own toxic pool. So that just also made me feel bad. And eventually they, you know, hung out without me again. So again, losing friends or people not uh, being in interested. In, or at least it seemed like, you know, not being interested in me. So I was just kind of like done. So, it was like November 6th, I think. 5th or 6th. Um, I come back from class. I took 10 Tylenol. And I just didn't feel anything. I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel depressed. I just felt like this was it. And I wasn't even going to post anything because I didn't want anybody to worry I was just kind of going to lay in my bed and you know pass on but then my roommate came back and he was like hey I'm going to get you some candy like I promised uh, you know what do you want and I think at that point I was like bro what am I doing <laughs> I was like bro what am I doing why am I why am I doing this? So I told him what I did and you know, we went down to the office. It took me a while kind of to get to get down there cuz I didn't know what was going to happen. I'd never done this before. Um police came. I was crying my eyes out. I I was like so scared. I didn't know what was going to happen to me or like college or anything cuz I never like talked about mental health ever. It was never a thing. It was always kind of like you're a guy. Push it back in the back of your head. Forget about it. These issues don't matter. You're going to do better in life. And so that's what it was. <laughs> that's what I did. But it wasn't the way to go. 
So went to the hospital. I just remember sitting there, seeing all these other people that were actually sick and needed the hospital. And I was taking up their time and getting in earlier. I just felt so bad. On top of everything else, I just felt like not not even worth it on top of everything. I was like, bro, just, I was just like, bro, just let me go right now. <laughs> I didn't, it was just so embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Uh, so they do the blood test. If I had taken one more Tylenol, I would have been gone or there would have been like no help. And the time that I had allowed before, you know, saying anything, you know, I would have been out. I would have been gone. So it's still kind of trippy to me to this day. But that's what happened. That's what, <laughs> that's what happened. It's crazy to think about that that was two years ago. Um, yeah, so after that, things started to kind of like get kind of better. People started to message me again. They were like really confused. They didn't know what was going on. I, w- I didn't, like I said, I didn't really talk about it my feelings because most of the time I was helping everybody else. They were telling me their issues, but I was never telling them mine. So I was just never, I didn't feel like important. I didn't feel like I needed to say anything and I cared about everybody else. I didn't feel like I was worth talking about because I wasn't being talked about. So, or at least in the right way. Uh, luckily, I had friends that came to the hospital, and they helped me through it, and I'll never forget that. I just remember my mom coming in, just crying. First, she thought it was her fault, but I'm like, it's not. So, yeah, it was just kind of crazy. I went back the next day. I was fine. Um they tried to contact me. I didn't set anything up for like therapy or anything. I, that was like, that was a problem. I should have <laughs> signed up for therapy then. Cause there was still a lot of things that I was going through that I just, I wasn't brave enough to face those problems yet. So eventually, you know, things started getting back to normal. I was back on schedule, getting, getting things back together. Uh, And then, in December, I get a message from my friend saying, Hey, I want to go to New York. (laughs) And I had money in my bank account, and I was like, you know what? Screw it. (laughs) Let's go to New York. Uh, Didn't tell my parents about this. Just went out there. I scheduled like five days out. I was still in the semester for my classes like I had finals the next week and I was just like you know what screw it so I got a backpack everything I picked that person up from their friend's house which was a drug house believe it or not Um, one of the craziest things I saw was somebody taking a whipped cream canister and taking the gas out of it for like to get high it was like it was just the craziest stuff man um it it wasn't the safest house and i'm glad i got that person out um they kind of needed a wake up wake up call themselves and i just wanted to get out i wanted an escape from where i was i just wanted to get out so we went to new york it was a nine hour drive and we didn't get there until 3 30 in the morning, you know, the, we got there, we stayed in New Jersey. Um, we didn't even get in the Airbnb until like 4 a.m. because there was like some key issues. But we ended up staying with this couple. And then there were some like French people that were also staying in the same place that we were. It was kind of a weird situation. But I was like, you know what? 
I don't care. I'm out and about. Um, of course, my parents were not happy. <laughs> they were freaking out, but my mom was nice enough to help me out a bit with the funding. And I went through New York. I, I made a bunch of vlogs that I haven't uploaded, which I'll just have to show you. <laughs> um, and those are coming. But it's just been like two years, and I just didn't feel confident enough just because I didn't really look great again. And that's another issue I had. Um, I just didn't feel like it was a good video, especially because I'm not really close with the person I was with at that time. It was a weird situation. Um, and I kind of just went with it. It was an old friend from a band and just got together and that's that's what it was um yeah so that's a whole nother story and i'll probably get into that once i start talking about new york because that was so crazy uh so then january new year's i'm with this new person not new but old new and things are going fine I was with somebody, finally. Didn't really care about, you know, who they were, what they had done. I was just like, okay, I'm with you now. And so I had put time and energy into that person again. Funny enough, they had a previous, a previous relationship. And it was like a month later, they had got back <laughs> with that person. So then again you know, knocked my confidence down even more. So at that point I was like, I'm just, I'm just done. I'm just done with everything. I was just like done. Not in the sense that, you know, I wanted to go, but, uh, I was just like done. And I got done with the semester I didn't do too good, but I was mainly focused on the TV show. I think I had got done like 15 episodes, just around that, probably like 12. Um, I did a farewell video for one of my friends that was one of the lead anchors on the show. Uh... And again, I was doing things for other people, which I didn't need to do, but I just felt like doing it because that's just who I am. I just like doing things for people, making people happy, but I wasn't really focusing on myself. And before I was, but I wasn't focusing on like myself as much as I should have or the ways that I should have. Like, instead of pushing things back, you know, and not talking about it, I should have just been open and talked about it. So, but I didn't. But now I have. So we're getting to that. Um, so, yeah, like I said, 2018 was like, it was a pretty bad year for me. Um, and then 2019... Summer was okay. Uh, I touched up with my friend. And, you know, now everything's pretty good with that. Um, had a few little bumps, but that's just, again, my trust issues because I just couldn't trust. <laughs> it was just so hard to trust. Now I'm finally understanding, but it was just like, it was just so hard. <laughs> it was just so hard to, like, get through that. Um, and got through these past two semesters. Um, I was still feeling pretty down though. I had the place to myself. I had got a new TV. I got lights for my room. I had a, a little party. I think it was like a Halloween party or something, some type of party in my apartment. Um, and I was like feeling okay, 
I was feeling pretty good. I don't think I was doing great in school, though. I was doing all right. You know, I was still getting, like, A's, but I wasn't, like, getting as much credits as I should have. Um, mainly, that stuff was in the previous years. But, you know, this year I should have been graduating. But I didn't. So that's how that went. You know. Um, but then there's a lot of, like, again, with the self-doubt and just me not uploading and me looking back at things and me still being stuck in the past. Um, I had turned 21, which means, you know, I could start drinking. So I was, I wasn't like crazy. I had like a couple beers here and there, but eventually I got like this bottle of brandy and, uh, I just kind of kept it around. I wasn't planning on drinking the whole thing. But eventually, it was like February came around, Valentine's came around. I felt kind of just like trash about myself. I had a lot of trust issues. And again, I wasn't uploading. I was making videos, but I wasn't uploading. Um, I made a short film, which was posted. And I felt really good about that. That was actually one of the main things I felt good about. I was TAing again. Had some problems with <laughs> with that, of course. Um, and things were just bringing me down again. I didn't feel... Again, I didn't feel important. And so it was like late February. Yeah, just around that time. Uh, I wanted to attempt again. And at that point, I was like, okay, I need to talk to to somebody. But I didn't know anything about therapy. I didn't know who to talk about it. I, I didn't know where to go. Because there was this one place, but I heard bad things about that place. And so finally I talked to my good friend, Desmond. Uh, I had a African American studies class with him. I'm just going to I'm just saying his name out because he's just been so supportive not just to me just to been just to everybody. He's just such such an important person to people and to me. And you know, he helped me out. He helped me get to that point. He helped me get to the point of like realizing okay I need I need help and he's not gonna go anywhere until I get this help so I finally got into therapy he sat with me and we just went through all the issues and I got my I got into therapy and it was the best thing I've ever done for myself I figured things out I learned things about myself I learned some new methods to like go through so that I'm not freaking out all the time or stressing out over little things and I was I'm feeling good now uh, in 2020 obviously coronavirus happened um, you know I went through therapy and then there was this film festival that we were gonna do and I was really excited for that um, things were getting better with, like, my personal life, with my family, um, friends, really realizing who my true friends are, um, just figuring a lot of things out for myself, feeling way better, and I feel way better now. It's really just, you know, once this virus gets over with, just kind of just getting back to normal. And focusing on the future and what's ahead instead of the past and what I've been stuck on. And so I haven't, I haven't posted. And so this is my post. This is me saying I'm here, I'm back, I'm going to try <laughs> to post again. Um, 
And yeah, man, this coronavirus is almost over, kind of. Who knows if it'll spike up again. Um, to address this Black Lives Matter situation, it's just crazy. Like, to think that racism has still been going on for all these years and just now it's being like now we're seeing some protests now we're seeing some answers now we're seeing everyday responses and we're just gonna have to see how consistent this is and how consistent the support is of course I'm for the Black Lives Matter movement um, and it's one thing being white and being, you know, for it, right? Because you can be white and you can be totally, like, for it, but it's until you actually share your opinion and express that you're actually with this and you're not just doing it for social status as a white person. Um, it's all about using your privilege. It's all, you know, using your platforms, talking to friends, and also getting rid of the toxic people, the racist people that are in your life, whether it be family. And I know that's hard to do, but it's something you just have to put a block on until further notice, until they understand the true problem at hand, the true, the true situation. And friends, get rid of those friends. Don't stop talking to them, because most of the time, if they're bringing up racist things, they're not your friends, because they're not your friends' friends. And they wouldn't, and if you were to be in a situation, you know, where you had your black friends around them and they had that same energy. It's like, how do you think your friend would feel? Your black friend, how do you think they would feel? It's just like, it's so, so old, so old ways of thinking so wrong it was wrong in the first place never should have happened but it did and I think that we have to accept that it it happened and racism is happening and it does exist and it's not to be ignored or put under the cover this is something that we're all talking about now um, I may not have brought it up in the past and others may have not brought it up either but I still have felt strongly about this whole thing like I've heard my friends or my friends friends say the n-word and I'm like bro what are you doing I'm like I don't care where you are I don't care if it's in a song I don't care if your friend's black and they let you say it, which they shouldn't be. I don't care, you know, what your friendship is. It doesn't matter. You don't say the word. You don't down people because of their culture or their skin tone. Like, really? Like, people are, they have their own ways of doing things. Everybody's different. You don't need to pick on somebody because they're different. Because they're different than you, specifically. And, you know, our current leader, bro, he's not even a leader. He's a leader of his own people, ultimately. So it's kind of just like, bro, I'm just kind of letting things go. You know, which side do you choose? It's like, I'm not on either side. I'm just trying to focus on my life because, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't have money, you don't have power. And if you don't have power, you're not anybody. 
you know, in the eyes of the government or the law or the country. You know what I mean? Social media, you don't see anybody that doesn't have money. You know what I mean? Or isn't famous, but they wouldn't be famous if they didn't have money or they didn't have advertisements or they didn't have sponsors backing them up. You know, and it's, it's a rare occasion when there's a true audience. And that's kind of what I usually watch my YouTubers for is they have a strong audience and I'm a part of that audience and they've never done anything wrong to stray away from, you know, being themselves, but also being, you know, nice to others in their community and just being reasonable. So yeah, that's kind of my whole like outlook on this whole thing. I hope it gets better, you know, rest in peace to George Floyd shouldn't have happened. It's ridiculous. And the thing is, there's probably so many other situations where that same thing has happened, where someone has been on somebody's neck because of a different color skin. You know what I mean? It's just, it's so crazy. So yeah, I'm doing better now. You know, I went through my ups and downs. I'm alive still, and I'm thankful that I'm alive. I'm thankful for the friends that I have, uh, for the people that have stayed around, stuck around, that have talked to me personally or online or through messages or anything. You know, I thank those people for being there, for sticking around for me, you know. And I'm going to try. I'm going to try to get back on track here because there's so much stuff you guys haven't seen yet. It's crazy. So, yeah, man. That's all I got to say. Until next time, peace out. Rock on. And I'll see you guys next time.